Good evening. It's time to go to church. Glad to see you out tonight. I, uh, I love Wednesday night. I uh, love being with you folks and, and with the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we welcome you tonight. Got a brother here back there with us tonight that we've known for a long time through church and been in revivals with him and praise the Lord with him. And that's the best way in this world to get acquainted, isn't it? It's through the Spirit of God. And so we welcome you. We're going to pray. I ask Shannon if you would lead us to God in prayer. Amen. I want to start tonight with a, just a short video. Uh, Sister Lucretia, that first clip I sent you, the girl that uh, testifies from her heart, speaks from her heart. Can you see it? Let me get it. <laughs> That ain't supposed to be on there. That ain't what I sent you, is it? Here it is. This is an important question right here. Okay, you guys ready? Yes. One of you is going to get it. Here we go. All right, here's your last passage. Both riches and honor come Madison. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 18. Sorry, that is incorrect. For the rest of you. Bethany. Chronicles 29, 10 through 13. That is correct. Please recite it. First Chronicles 29, 10 through 13. Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation, and David said, Blessed be thou. The Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Oh, Lord, this is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O oh Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. First Chronicles 29, 10 through 13. Bethany, bring us into your heart and mind. What was going on there? I just realized how powerful and in control God is and how everything is just because of him and he's so great and amazing. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the way the word of God should impact us. Praise God. That's awesome. That's what this is all about. You know, there's two different ways that we come to know the Word of God. One is intellectually, that's with our mind, and the other is experientially with our heart. What you just did right there was experienced God's Word in your life. You were living from the inside out. 
We didn't get a chance to see what was going on in your head. We got a chance to see what was inside your heart. Right. And that's what God wants more than anything. And that's what makes a testimony. Amen. Right there is that we're living from the inside out. You see, all religions have two things in common. There's belief and there's behavior. Hmm. But we're not about a religion. We're about a relationship. And we still have belief, our belief about God, and it affects our behavior. But there's a really fascinating thing that happens between those two. It's called become. We believe in Jesus Christ. We become God's son. And now on the basis of who we are inside, we behave. We don't have to try to act like God. We don't have to try to act like Jesus. We just simply let his love rest in our heart, and then it comes out. Right. Just like we saw it come out right there, Bethany. Amen. I'm proud of you. I am really proud of Amen. you. That was awesome. That was awesome. I thought that was pretty awesome. Uh, Someone Young people said, from across the country participate in... Shut it off now, yeah. Uh, we do have another one or two that we're going to show, but, uh, and I'm, I apologize for what come on the screen. That what, Lucretia, why'd you do that? I, that ain't what I said. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, uh, they were in a, a Bible bee, and them kids are amazing. You know, I've told you about kids I knew that quoted the book of Psalms and the one girl quoted the book of Proverbs. Um, how they do it, I don't know. I know it has to be God. And, and you notice what they did? Said where uh, they, they started a verse of scripture. What was it? Second Chronicles something. How many of you can quote Second Chronicles? And she just pulled it right up and started quoting it. Started quoting it. And, and that's what these kids can do. Uh, I know that at Belmont Christian Academy, we had a convention every year, and churches come from all over the world, really. Uh, and uh, they would meet somewhere, sometimes it's out west, sometimes Nashville, you know, or whatever. And they would have these. And our kids would study, 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 you know, go over scriptures, read scriptures, memorize scriptures to be able to compete in those Bible bees. And they'd make me ashamed of myself, really, you know. But the point is, it don't just happen. It takes effort, don't it? It, it takes effort. Sh sh let's show this other clip. I'm going to take a chance. And maybe there won't be anything on there that... Okay, good deal. Good deal. Show you one more. In John 10, 18, Jesus said he had the power slash authority to lay his life down and take it up again. In this verse, what is the Greek word for power slash authority? Exorkizo, exoke, exelco, exousia. The correct answer is exousia, and although I have eaten lots of Greek salad, I would have gotten that wrong, but every one of you got it right. Good All job. Four of them. All of them got it right. This next question is worth 350 points. In John 7:30, men sought to arrest Jesus in the temple because of his claim about who had sent him, but they didn't lay a hand on him because he slipped away in the crowd, his hour had not yet come. They were amazed at his teaching. The Pharisees didn't want to start a riot in the temple. The correct answer is his hour had not yet come. And y'all got it right. 350 points. Yeah. Your next question is worth 450 points. In Psalm 18, verse 30, the word of God is proven slash tried, and he is a blank to all who take refuge slash trust in him. Is it a fortress slash strong tower, a shelter, a sanctuary slash bulwark, or a shield slash buckler?
The correct answer is a shield slash buckler. And Heidi, Kate, and Zachary, you all got it correct. Take one more. Okay, your last question is worth 550 points. So here we go. In John 8, 15 through 16, Jesus tells the Pharisees that he judges no one. But if he did judge, it would be true because he came to show the world their sin. His father sent him to judge the world. His father who was, excuse me, his father who sent him was with him. Or all men have sinned and fallen short. Correct answer is his father who sent him was with him. Heidi and Kate, you both got that one. There's another verse, at least one of those answers was so close that just like on the first one where it says that his hour had not yet come is the reason they didn't take him up in the temple. There's another place where they were going to stone him, but he slipped out of the crowd. And that was the other. And so, you know, these kids, and, and I wanted to show those to lead in to the lesson tonight. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Paul wrote to Timothy, and he said, Study to show to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to show thyself approved unto who? God, a workman that, ne a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Um, I think probably this may be Garyology or just my thinking, but that's where most of us fail. One area that we all fail in is applying ourselves to know the Word of God and rightly dividing it, rightly dividing it. And there's, so, there's a whole lot in this statement that he makes. When you, when you study it out and... Uh, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There's one person in this life that as a Christian we are to answer to and in, the, in this world and in the world to come because if you don't line up with God in this life, he chastises you and you fall short. And, and no chastisement at the present time is, is glorious, but it's grievous. But later on, you realize that it was the right thing, and it brings you back into line where you need to be spiritually. Uh, but then there's a judgment to come when this world is over. And look, this is, he didn't suggest study. He, it's a commandment, isn't it? Study to show. And you, Well, he's talking to the preachers. No. He's talking to the church. Now, it's the preacher's job to study and to be able to preach and teach, and, but it's every Christian's duty to get grounded in the Word of God because that's where our faith is built. That's where our faith comes from. That's how we're going to know how to witness to people. And, to, uh, and then, you know, you want to advance in this so that you can become not just the student but the teacher. And so on and so forth. And that's how churches grow. So I, I just kind of wanted us to look at that tonight. Um, it's, a, it's a very serious challenge and commandment from the Word of God. And I'm just afraid. It's my experience through the years. And I've, I've been here a long time pastoring churches and in different churches. And I wasn't going to bring this up. But me and Carolyn was sitting there last night and... She started just writing down the churches that I've been in. 
and or I preached in. What was it? 116, 120, something like that. Different churches that I preached in. Uh, that don't make me a good preacher. That don't even make me somebody that knows the Word of God. That don't make me any better than anybody else. But I've, I've witnessed a lot in a lot of different churches. And um, most of us, including myself, fall short when it comes to the knowledge of the Word of God. And I'm not scolding you. I'm scolding me. And, and, uh, and, and I know you could study 10 lifetimes and you wouldn't get it all. But you're not going to get none of it if you don't apply yourself. Right? Um, and that's with anything. A doctor studies seven years, day and night. Talk to a doctor that's been through medical school. See how much time he had to play golf and to go on vacations. And if he didn't have a lot of money or on a big scholarship, what little time he had, he was just trying to put a hamburger on the table. You know, seven years and he's not a specialist. Am I right, Melissa? He is just the family practitioner, you know. But he's a genius, but he's not a specialist. He's got to go another three or four years to specialize in a field. And then, you know what? Every, I, I taught, once a year I go see my heart doctor. He's always been somewhere studying. He studied all of his life. He tell, he'll sit there and tell me stuff like I'm supposed to know what he's talking about, you know. And uh, he, uh, uh, but that doctor never quits learning, never, because there's breakthrough in science every year or so, you know, and they got to catch up on that and they got to work. And, and it's, not called, it's not called practicing medicine for nothing. They're learning. They're practicing. Now, there's a lot they got down, but there's a lot they're still learning. And, you know, I was reading from Phillips today, and uh, he argued that the Bible is more complex than any medical book. And the way he laid it out, you could see how. Uh, it's a complex book. It was written... Oh, it took a period of 1,500 years by 40 different authors inspired of God from Babylon all the way to the western part of the Roman Empire. These men lived, dwelled. Shepherds, fishermen, uh, men's, men with great minds, and men with no education. Did you know that the, the scholars believe that the disciples flunked out of school? And that's why they were looking for a, 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 they were looking for a, a master. Because the Jews that wanted to excel in the Jewish religion would have a master. They would have a teacher, a rabbi that they followed around. They had to be accepted as the rabbi. You know how they, were, how they were chosen? Just like these kids. What they were doing. The rabbi would start quoting from Chronicles and the, the student had to pick up and quote the rest of the book before to test him. Now, and then it was up to the rabbi whether he would accept him into his, into his, as one of his students. And they were called Ptolemies. They followed him day and night. They, he never left their sight. They wanted to be like their master. And he was brilliant. He, was, he could quote the whole Old Testament or the first five books. They had to quote the first five books of the Bible by the age of 12 or they flunked out of school. Now, I don't understand that, but they could do it. They could do it. And so that's what these kids, you know, she quoted a word or two out of Chronicles there and that, that little girl picked it up and run with it. Um, so over a period of 40, year, uh, 40 authors, 14, 1,500 years in a vast area of the, of the East there. Um, and it's inerrant. Only God can do that. God just took me in and used them. He could have done, he spoke through a donkey. If he could speak through a donkey, he can speak through 
Paul the Apostle, you know. But then Paul writing to Timothy. Um, you, know, the, you know, the New Testament's broke down into five sections. Did you know that? How many of you? Can you name them? I'm not sure I can. Um, the first four books, the, the Gospels, the book of Acts stands alone as one of the sections. The letters to the churches. Uh, the letters to the leaders like Timothy and Titus and those pastoral epistles. And then the letters to personal people like Philemon and so on. Um, it's, a, it's a book that every Christian should be intrigued by and drawn to. And drawn to. Um, so we're commanded to study. And this, when you study here, is more than just sit down a few moments or Bible school or Sunday school or preparing for a message. It's, it's much deeper than that. It gives the ideal of someone, uh, a, a laborer, working tirelessly to get a job done, to get a job done. Um, and don't you think that we, he wants us to study with purpose? Not just because it's the right thing to do. I come to Sunday school because it's the right thing to do. I come to Sunday school because I've always come to Sunday school. When we study the Word of God, it ought to be for a purpose. And that's to better ourselves as Christians and to be more effective as Christians. You know, when you, you, you got out of school and you went to work or started a business, you didn't want to stay where you entered, right? You wanted to excel in whatever you, you should have wanted to excel and grow. And, and if you was a laborer, you wanted to become a, a foreman and, it, and then a superintendent and, and then maybe own your own business. You wanted to excel, uh, grow. And to do that, you had to apply yourself. And for us to know the Word of God, we got to apply ourselves. We have to apply ourselves. Uh, I want to read you a little bit here that goes along with what we're talking about. It says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman, a laborer, a, a, someone who has purpose that needeth not be ashamed. Have you ever been ashamed Amen. of where you were in the Word of God? Amen. I have. I may have told you all this. I was just a young Christian. And I studied, man. I'm telling you, Carolyn can tell you. I don't know what it was. Maybe God knew he was going to call. I mean, maybe. God knew he was going to call me to preach, but I don't know why I had such a desire to read and study the Word of God. And, um, but I was just getting started. And when I got started, I couldn't quote John 3, 16, really. I didn't even know what it meant. I didn't know Jesus wept. I, didn't, I was grown before I knew or a great big guy before. I was in Vietnam, and I didn't even know what the red letters meant. That's how ignorant I was. So I had a lot of catching up to do. I had a lot of catching up to do. So I was on the job, a construction job in Bowling Green. Me and a, who, another boy there that become a preacher and, and a, a lifelong friend. And we were working. And there was this fella, and he was a Church of Christ fella. And he, he, he seemed to be brilliant. I learned later that he would go debate people, you know. So... Uh, we may have been praising the Lord or something, you know, we, and uh, he called us out on it. And uh, he said, you boys ain't saved. Y'all, you've not saved because you didn't obey the gospel, you know, and had all the talking points, you know. Now I know some of them, of the Church of Christ talking points. And, uh, and I'm not knocking the Church of Christ. I'll tell you one thing about them. They know their Bible. You better, you better be studied up if you debate them on what baptism being essential to salvation or not essential to salvation. So <clears throat> anyway, he turned us every way but loose. I was so ashamed. I couldn't say nothing. My buddy got real angry, which wasn't right either, but I was hoping he'd hit him, but he didn't. No, I wasn't. And uh, he got real angry, and I remember driving home, and I made God a promise, I'll never be caught like this again. And, and then I really started studying. And now, there's not a lot I know about the Bible, but I know one thing. 
you won't get it if you don't apply yourself. And that's with anything. You know, you, if you're going to school, you won't get math the way you ought to. Now, some people just, but you, you can make D's or you can make A's, you know. Um, I would love to be an A student in the Word of God, but I'm going to have to start working harder. Now, watch. So he says, and rightly dividing the word of truth, the, the phrase rightly dividing the word of truth calls for a proper division of the scriptures. To divide the word of truth rightly, we must have a constant hermeneutic. Does everybody know what hermeneutics is? We must interpret the Bible not allegorically, but literally, taking into account the Hebrew and Greek languages. Languages of its birth and making allowances for the cultural, historical, geographical backgrounds against which it arose. We must take into account the obvious differences between the dispensation, the various kinds of judgments that people will face, the two different resurrections, our standing and our state, Israel and the church, the church and the kingdom, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. In other words, we must make a difference where God made a difference. We must pay attention to figures of speech, types, symbols, the chronological uh, 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 of events. The car- What's the word there? Of events, the structure of each book. The harmony of scripture, the significance of names and places. If we allow these guidelines and an adequate, comprehensive, consistent, and correct uh, exegesis of the text should emerge from our study. This is all engulfed in hermeneutics when you study hermeneutics. The hermeneutics is a science of interpreting the word of God. And every Christian ought to study it. Every Christian ought to study it. Because I'm telling you, you can get lost in this book. You can get lost in it. That's why people don't, you don't know much about Leviticus or, or uh, uh, Chronicles or uh, um, some of those books back there that seem boring because we don't study. And it, it all is like a great meal. It all fits together. Every verse, every word of it comes together as, as one book, one story, one story. Um, but you got to know how to rightly divide. Because I'm telling you guys, that's where denominations come from. That's where different beliefs come from out of this book. It's because somebody disagreed with somebody else on the interpretation of it. And there's not ten interpretations or four or two. There's one. It says one thing. And you got to rightly divide that. Now, sometimes the the prophecies, there's a near future prophecy, there's a father down the road uh, prophecy, and you got to understand the two. And I've taught you about gaps in scriptures and those things, and and you got to see all of that. But you got to apply yourself, you got to study. In, In all of this work of rightly dividing, we should not scorn the help of other people. God has given the gift of teachers to his church. Let me tell you something. Because you believe Arminianism don't mean you can't learn from somebody that believes uh, eternal security. That makes sense, don't it? And, 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 and you, because you believe Arminianism or the, the way of the Baptists, you should not uh, scorn someone or, or shun someone in his teaching if he believes Calvinism. And I don't believe Calvinism. But some of the greatest teachers and educators believe Calvinism. I often say, Kevin, you got to take some and leave some with any of them, with anybody. You know, Be careful. Be careful who you, who you listen to. Uh, but... If he is, if he, his purpose is to rightly divide the word of truth, you can learn from him. But you got to be schooled enough. You need to be schooled enough with some of them to know the difference in, um, in error in his teaching. Any thoughts or questions? 
the preaching and writings uh, of, of gifted godly men can be invaluable. As long as we listen to them, we read them with the Berean caution. Uh, Acts 17. Does anybody know what that says? I didn't look it up, but I think I know what it means. It says. Anybody? The Bereans studied the scriptures every day to see if those teachers were right. And that's how you, that's how you find a false teacher. That's how you, you figure him out is by the word of God. By the word of God. Any thoughts? The diligent student will build an ever-growing library of useful books, including commentaries, dictionaries, encyclopedias, atlases, uh, histories, biographies, uh, systematic theologies, works on uh, comparative religion and the cults and word studies, and it goes on and on. He even says in good fiction, I disagree with him. I'm not going to read. I don't think there is any good fiction in as far as the Bible concerns, is concerned. Uh, when the drums of World War II were, were stilled and men turned hopefully uh, to the pursuits of peace, they soon discovered that their dreams were turned into a nightmare. The Soviet Union launched a global effort to communize the world. The Iron Curtain came down. The Eastern Europe was swallowed up. The Cold War, War began. Winston Churchill was appalled. It occurred to him that the Bible had prophecies that might shed light on his path as he taught to, uh, sought to guide the, his people along the peerless paths of peace. But who could he get to shed light on these things? After diligent inquiries, he chose a former missionary named Harold St. John, a gifted Bible teacher and one who was at home in the prophetic world. Uh, arrangements were made for the two men to meet. For the better part of a day, the great statesman sat at the feet of one of God's choicest saints as the great Bible teacher took him through the scriptures. Listen to this. As the two men parted at the end of the day, Churchill said to his new friend, Mr. St. John, I would give half the world for the knowledge of the Bible. Mr. St. John acknowledged the compliment and quietly said, Sir, I have give, I have give all the world to get it. What's that tell me? What's that tell you? You can't love the world and love the word of God. You can't do it. You know what, he te what that tells me? He applied his whole life to, to gain the knowledge, the spiritual knowledge that he had in order to set it this statement, set it with this statesman, Winston Churchill, and try to impart unto him some spiritual knowledge. It don't just happen, guys. That's why we need to build our churches. We need to build our Sunday schools, our Bible schools, our youth groups. Um, I know where there's a youth group that meets every Sunday night. There'll be 25 to 30 high school, college age kids there. Can't wait to get there. It wasn't the teacher that called this group together and started it. It was the kids that wanted to learn the Bible. Why? Because these kids were brought up under this teacher to, uh, to love the Word of God. They started out this high. Now, as I said, they're high school and, and college-age kids. And they, they, they sit at the edge of their seat every Sunday evening studying the Word of God. That's almost heard of in our churches today. Almost unheard of. But it can happen when people fall in love with God. This little girl, these kids, they fall in love with the Word. You know who else they fall in love with? One another. That's how it works. The Decalogue was based on two commandments, wasn't it? Not ten, two. It, was all, it, it, it hung on two. Love God, love, you, love your fellow man. Love your neighbor. Um... 
And you can only get this through the Word of God. You want to be more spiritual? Be more biblical. Right? Now, you can shout the rooftop off, and I love it. But if you want to be effective out there in the world for God, you, you, need, a, you need a foundation. Uh, you need a reasonable knowledge of God's Word, His truth. Uh, It'll open doors for witnessing. It really will. You know, I was in a place this week, a little old girl in there. I say little old girl, she's probably 25, you know. And uh, she said, how you doing? I said, well, you know, at my age, getting through one more day means a lot, you know. And she kind of laughed. She said, look, it could happen to any of us, couldn't it? And I said, you're almost quoting scripture. She kind of giggled a little bit. And I, I said, uh, where do you go to church? Well, we're not... You know, we're not going anywhere right now. I said, you got a family? And I take it she had a husband. She didn't say. She said, yeah. So she said, you know a good church? And, and uh, I said, I do. Uh, but, you know, might be too far for, for you. And uh, so she knew Brother Woody. And I said, get out there. Then go out there, you know. And, uh, um, and then I told her before I left, I said, you know what? Be sure and tell Woody that I sent you because I get $10 for everybody I send. Well, I left her just almost rolling in the floor, you know. So anyway, I told Woody and I said, be sure and tell him, say, her when you see her, that that old man, I have to pay him $10 every time he recommends somebody to come here, you know. Uh, there's a whole lot of different ways to witness and talk to people in there. And... Uh, mm, I believe the joy of the Lord is the best way to do it, especially out there when you're talking to strangers. All right, you got any questions, anything on your heart? Anything. Um, this book right here, um, you could, you know, a person could read a, a medical book or part of a medical book Maybe wouldn't under, I wouldn't understand 90% of it to begin with. Couldn't pronounce the words. My vocabulary is so limited. Uh, but there's people that would do that and think that they probably had a basic knowledge of medical science and how to doctor, you know. Uh, you, to be a mechanic these days, you'll have, to, you'll have to go to school for a long time to work on a, a modern-day vehicle. It ain't, you don't pull it up under a shade tree anymore, jerk the, got to change the, the water pump, do it in about 20 minutes like they used to on those 289s and 302s and back in the 70s. You don't do it. You got to have a, all kinds of machines just to diagnose the thing, you know. Uh, but you know, people will read a few verses, read this book, maybe read it through. Uh, take some correspondence courses, read a magazine <laughs> on a special topic from the Bible, and then they want to challenge everybody that, that uh, whether they're God-called or not. They want to challenge people on, on the Word of God. And what I'm trying to say is, you don't become an expert by just dabbling around the edges in the Bible. And to be honest with you, I don't know if there is such a thing as an expert on the Bible. There's one, he's Jesus. The rest of us are just practicing Christians, aren't we? We're practicing here. Every day of my life, I gotta, you know, I gotta get something right. I gotta do something. Uh, it's like a doctor practicing medicine. We're ever learning. We need to learn and come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, there's people that are ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. But our purpose is to seek out the truth of God from the Word of God, and that's the only source. I don't care what the TV evangelists tell you. It's the only source to knowing the purpose or knowing the truth of God, and that's the written Word. Any questions? Anything? Show, show uh, Lucretia, where are you? We'll finish with one more clip. These little guys just thrill me. I wouldn't want to debate the scriptures with them, would you? Fifty points. 
In Psalm 103, verse, verse 7, the Lord made known his ways to whom? Man, Moses, the people, the sons slash children of Israel. The correct answer is Moses, and you all got it correct. Good job, guys. The second question is worth 350 points. The Jews asked Jesus in John 8, 25, who are you? Jesus answers, I am. I and the Father are one. What I have told you from the beginning, you would know who I am if you had believed the scriptures. The correct answer is what I have told you from the beginning. Caleb, Anan, Havala, you all got 350 points. Okay, this next question win this is worth 450 it. points. In 1 Chronicles 29, 10 through 11, David blesses the Lord. Which answer is not a reason why he blesses God? His victory and majesty, his goodness and honor, his greatness and power, or all that is in heavens and the earth are his. There's a reason why you're all semifinalists. The correct answer is his goodness and honor, and you all got it correct. Now this is the big one. It's worth 550 points. Listen closely. In John chapter nine, verses four through five, Jesus tells his disciples that night is coming when no one can work. But as long as he is in the world, he is the light of the world. He is the good shepherd. He will continually testify to the truth. People can look to him to see God the Father. The correct answer is he is the light of the world and every single one of you got it correct. Look, Chris, you can turn the mic or the the internet off now. Any anybody got any questions or thoughts about anything you saw here or what we've taught tonight? Any questions? I know it's a kind of bland study, you know, but that's how the Word of God is, isn't it? It's like a good meal, you know. <laughs>